we live. We live. We live. We live. Hello, hello, hello. Oh my goodness. Okay, let me go up here so I can see the little comments when people make comments and stuff like this. Thank you so much for joining me. Welcome to my Happy Her show. I actually recently renamed, recently named it. I didn't have a, a title. You know, I was just talking to ladies about happiness. Right. But then I thought. It's about being happy, er, right? Exactly. And so, so women, then I was like, happy her, right, yes. right, right, right. Yes. I love. I think that's a perfect um, pun, and I think it's a perfect title because um, women need to focus more on that. <laughs> and so I think that's good. Like, yeah, whatever you so, need inside to make you happy. Absolutely, absolutely, and that is the whole point of the whole show. I'll just say, I'm Kamisha Milton. Hello, everyone. Oh, thank you so much for joining. And so I started this Happy Her Show with that goal in mind. I was talking to a friend and she wasn't, she was talking about suffering and sadness and stuff. And I said, no, I think people want to be happy. And we need to talk more about happiness and more about, you know, how we can have more fulfilling lives. It's like you yeah. said, as women, because we don't tend to think of ourselves as much as we could and we should, right? right? That's true. And so the it's like, ones. We the last ones on the on the run all day. We're doing for everybody else, and then we leave a little a little piece if that for ourselves sometimes. Yeah, but we're not supposed to do that. We're not mm -hmm. supposed. To do that. We're supposed to live from our overflow. We're supposed to give from our overflow, but we don't. <laughs> I feel like you've been watching Dr. Ayanla. Okay, so I'll let you introduce yourself, and then we can we can get into it. <laughs> okay. Um, hi, everyone. I am Lisa Smith Sherrod. Um, yes, Dr. Lisa Smith Sherrod. And I have known Kamisha. Oh, my goodness. I don't even know. So Jalen is 25. So probably like almost. <laughs> almost <laughs> oh, I thought he was like, okay. So literally. Well, he will be like, 24, though. He will be 24. Yeah, like 25 years. Like probably at least 25 yeah, years. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm so excited that she asked me to join her this evening. And so to talk about one of my favorite subjects. Yeah. So, oh, this is one of your favorite it. subjects? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Oh, definitely. wow. Oh, that's mm -hmm. so great. Mm -hmm. Why is it one of your favorite subjects? I just think that it's important that we look at, I'm like a really optimistic, like glass half full, there's always a brighter side kind of person. Mm -hmm. And so I always try to try to look at like the, you know, the positive things. I, you know, I'm realistic, mm -hmm. but I try to look, cause there's always, there's always something good. One day my dad told me 80% of the things that we worry about never happen. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what, daddy, you're right. Mm -hmm. you're right. And when I thought about that, I mean, how could you, you know, how could you not like be more positive and um, really just have more joy with how we're living? Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I think that's just how I choose to live. Yeah. Well, I think that's absolutely a good point because it is a choice, right? Now, I do think that some people are kind of like you and me, like more naturally optimistic or positive or kind of upbeat. But that's not to say that we're like that all the time. And of course, no one is, you know, happy all the time. We all have a range of emotions, right, that we go through in life, like we're up and we're down. But there is something about choosing happiness. You know what I mean? Exactly. Even in times of when you when you recognize, right, that you are not where you want to be kind of emotionally or feeling the best. And they say, you know, I choose to look at this situation a different way or I choose to have a different feeling about this mm -hmm. or about this like those are absolutely choices i totally agree with that and then i also think like i was thinking happiness and sometimes i guess i think of more from a spiritual standpoint i think mm -hmm. of joy right like mm -hmm. i feel like you know in galatians it talks about how one of the fruits of the spirit is joy mm -hmm. and i think about joy being like that inner peace and contentment and comfort and mm -hmm. just something that exudes from you and I think sometimes happiness is more tied to our circumstances. And mm -hmm. so I feel like happiness kind of goes and comes, like you said, depending on what's happening. Mm -hmm. But that joy stays there. It's in your, it's there, it's in your core. Mm -hmm. And so I think that like the way that we look at things can cultivate happiness within us. And mm -hmm. hopefully it can spill over to other people as well. So when you say 
there's joy. Do you feel like you always have joy and you have to just tap into that joy or do you have to get to a joyous place? No, nope, I think um, I always have joy because I know where my source is, right? Like, so mm -hmm. I always have joy because I know it really comes from my relationship with Jesus Christ. However, he does it right. However, <laughs> however, I think there are times when um, I might not be happy, right? Like I mm -hmm. might, something happened, a, a situation that was beyond my control happened and, um, and I'm just not happy with it, right? Like it could be something at work. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, a lot of times we don't, we don't always choose our circumstances at work, but, mm -hmm. but we have, we have certain circumstances and I'm not happy about a decision somebody made, or I'm not happy about something somebody said or right. how somebody treated a person, right. but I'm still going to have my inner joy. Mm. I, I might not be happy about it. And so, you know, you got to think about what you're going to do to fill your cup back up. So you don't stay in that place. Yeah. I like how you separate it separate happiness from joy and contentment because some people kind of try to like lump them together yeah. or I have talked to other women though who have said you know they do kind of work from a place of contentment right but or joy contentment mm -hmm. or joy but those also are like spiritual spiritual women you know sort of like what you're saying mm -hmm. and happiness is more of is taught as more of like you said about your circumstances or like a destination you know right like you, you will be happy when this happens you will be happy when this or you will exactly. happy when when i get a house when i graduate here when i have children when i have whatever mm -hmm. versus and and if you have if you live life like that waiting for this destination of happiness that's yep. really not going to come. It's not going to come, right? It's, it's just, because it's always going to have to be something else, right? And so if you sit down in the joy and the contentment and like kind of enjoy the journey, because mm -hmm. some days are going to be better than others. Like it's been raining every day, mm -hmm. every day. And mm -hmm. I am not happy with the rain, but I keep <laughs> on looking at the grass. I keep on looking at the grass and I keep on looking at the flowers and I'm like, all right, we right, good. Right, right. But, but you don't I, let the rain ruin your day. You don't look at yeah. the rain and say, no, today. I put on my bright colors and keep it moving. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's what we have yeah. to do. That's what we have to do. Mm -hmm. So so what? So that is one of the things that you do then to kind of brighten up yourself or, or move to a happier place if you're not in a happier place. Like what are some things that you that you do? Actually, So like. You know, honestly, people wouldn't believe it because I think I've been forced into an extroverted world, but I'm a little bit of an introvert, right? So sometimes a I, a little bit, right? <laughs> and so I know sometimes I need like a day, like I need a day to kind of like disconnect, kind of not be on technology mm -hmm. um, and not be peopling. And so that kind of fills me up. Like after I've given, 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 given to everyone, people at work, family, friends, it's always good to get that time to fill myself up. And so that might be just chilling, like like having a glass of wine or sitting outside in a beautiful place or mm -hmm. like laying in the bed watching Netflix, eating mm -hmm. some popcorn, something I really enjoy. Like those are things that I do um, to fill myself up and to make me, I guess, to return myself like to a happy place. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. It's something about like, actually, like, you know, when you um, work remotely right now, I'm not happy because there's a deer eating my grass outside. But when you um, <laughs> when you like when you work remotely, you don't necessarily get like fully like dressed up, made up and all that kind of stuff every day. Yeah. And so when I have an opportunity to do that, I like fully embrace that. I try to, you know, look, look nice, like uh, make sure I, keep I look good, head. like look good, feel good connection. Exactly. Hair okay. done, nails done, you know, doing all the things that make you um, feel beautiful. Oh, wow. And so I love that too, where you said you have to kind of go back to your, into yourself, it sounds like. And even if you're not an introvert, I think it's necessary yep. because really if, if what you're saying is true about your joy and your contentment, it does come from within anyway. Right. Exactly. So if that, if it's coming from within, you have to go within, right. To get back to it, to reconnect to it, to yep. remind yourself that it's there, you know, when you have really, really low times or whatever, mm -hmm. you do have to go back to yourself and spending time with yourself. Yeah. 
and just and tap in, tap in, mm. tap into yourself. Yes, yeah. tap into yourself. Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely tapping into yourself. Um, okay, so what other things? What other things do you do that bring you? Um, in the morning, like when it's quiet, like I get up very early in the morning, usually like around five. And so even if my alarm doesn't go off, like I get up super early in the morning mm-hmm. and I um, have some devotional time um, and I have coffee every day. And I said to myself, I would not, I would not be addicted to coffee because my mom was addicted to coffee. And like she, she, like she wasn't right until she had like her first cup and she would have more than one cup. Mm. And I was always like, oh, I'll never be addicted to anything. That's crazy. But I find myself some mornings, my husband will bring it to me in the room and I'll have the coffee before I even like get up out of bed. <laughs> that but, sounds addicted to me. That sounds like yeah, it might be <laughs> If you haven't even gotten out of bed, like, before I put one foot on the ground, I have to have coffee. I'll be like, some of these days, can you bring me the coffee? I can't make it down to the coffee pot. But then... um. I like to get up and like have my coffee and, you know, read um, a devotional or have prayer like in the morning. I try to keep like a running um, prayer list. You know, you see people and they're like, did it is going on? Pray for me. And I'm, I try not to be like, OK, I'll pray for you and then forget. So I try to write it down. And then during that morning coffee time. Right. I will. I'll have praying, my time alone with God. As well. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> yes. it's important though to have that quiet time in the morning, and I do think that how you start your day sets the tone for your day. It does. So yeah, I I would agree with that too. I I don't. I'm not a coffee drinker, so I I can't say that the first thing I do in the morning is is get any coffee. But I do have a. I've mentioned this before, like a, a grateful practice. So before I get up. I will just kind of lay there and just think of things that I'm grateful for, you know? I yeah. I, I started it as, I started it like as a journaling kind of thing. Like when I was, like, was going to ask. If you down. Yeah, I did. I started it like that some years ago, but then I don't know, sometimes getting up and journaling, you don't always have time or, you know, you don't do it. So now I just wake up. Because there's always something as soon as I wake up to be grateful for, even if I just exactly. think back to the day before, like this morning, you know, we had family visit because, you know, they came to see my aunt. I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm so grateful that I got to see, you know, my cousin Robert. Yeah. You know? And then he treated us to lunch. I'm like, I'm so grateful. See, that's something to be grateful for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm so grateful for that lovely lunch, you know. Yeah. And then I'm like, so grateful for this nice bed that I get to sleep and I'm so grateful that I can be here for my mom right and like it is usually only a few things I'm not you know normally laying that long thinking about yeah. it but even just three to five things in the morning just helps me to feel happier I guess yeah. and more appreciative you know of of my life and, and I think if you, if you focus on those things that you're grateful for it it just kind of diminishes the feelings of um, sadness or like depression or what have you, because, you know, it gives you hope, mm. you know, the, the things are, cause you know, if, you, if it could happen today, it's going to happen tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And as long as we're still alive, we have hope. Yeah, yeah. Have hope. absolutely. Absolutely. And we don't spend enough time, I think, looking at the good things, you know, we spend so much time, just in general, I think dwelling on the bad and dwelling on the negative. And if you have one bad thing that happens, you could be talking about it all day to everybody. You know what I mean? Exactly. So that just exactly. keeps you in that space, right? That just keeps you in that place. It keeps it you, does. yeah, in like that low place where you can't get back up to happiness. So, and also things happen during the day that are out of your control, right? So, as long as you can at least, you know, what you can control, right? You start the day <laughs> with what you can control. Then when things do happen to you, I feel like I'm more prepared versus right. if I just kind of like rush out of the bed and I'm like rushing all around or whatever. And then I'm more easily agitated too. I think. Yes. When people, yeah, when they come to me with their issues, or they come to me or, or even if somebody cuts me off or something, I'm like, ah, you know, versus if I start like as a, in a calm, kind of grateful way, like, oh, mm-hmm. how do you greet the day? It just, maybe there's some science to it with the brain. Oh, I'm sure there is. It's it yeah. definitely, Yes. I'm sure that how you start your day, because even 
even on the occasions, and I need, I'm telling you, I'm going to start again on Monday, but on those occasions when I go to the gym, first thing in the morning. I know, I've seen you all out there exercising on your bikes, yeah. riding, going it's to cool. the gym. That's great. And, and it's been, I mean, I'm going to be honest, it's been a little hectic and I have not done it in a while, but I told Cliff that Monday we are mm. going to have to like keep our gym day. First of all, we paying for it. And second of all, <laughs> well, <I'm good> <laughs> and second of all, you do feel better. Like after we go, yeah. we go like, yeah, we did that. You know, and yeah. you got to get up a little earlier. You got to get out. But at the end of the day, you're going to like, it's going to help you reach your goals. Yes, 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 absolutely. Exercise, moving your body around, like all of that is is good. It's probably yeah. some hormones there too. I don't know if it's endorphins or whatever. Yes. Like actually helping you. Yeah, yeah. Actually help bring you. And then you also, I also find, so I recently joined Orange Theory Fitness. I loved Orange Theory. I did. I was there for a minute before the oh, pandemic. were you? Oh, I was there really? before the pandemic. I loved oh. it. Oh my goodness. So I had this, I had knee surgery. Like I, I told my meniscus, that's a whole nother story. But anyway, I had knee surgery last January. And so the doctor said, yeah. oh, you need to lose weight. You know, you have this pressure, extra pressure on your knee. And I had already lost weight. I was feeling pretty good about myself. And so he told really? me, thanks, Bernie. I got to lose more weight. So anyway, I really hadn't lost anymore, but I've been maintaining, right? I've been maintaining. That's important. And yeah, so because I walk, I like walking. Like walking is very kind of calming and therapeutic to me, but I wasn't losing weight. And then one day I was like, I want to see what's going on in that Orange Theory. It's a free class. I know it's a woman-owned business. I heard the woman like on a podcast or something. I was yes. like, oh my God, I didn't even know, you know, anything about it. And I went into the one class. I loved it. I yeah. loved it. Yep. Because it's variety, right? It's variety. You have a coach there pushing you. Then you have like all of your stats up on the computer. And like, it's like, you're, you're kind of going against the other people, but you're really going against yourself. Because yourself. you're like, how many splat points can I right. get? <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm in the green? Okay. You know, you yes. just, yeah. Yep. Yes, exactly. And so, so now of course, Arthur has joined, you know, I was like, oh, I love so this. Good. So now y'all go together. Yeah, we've That's been good. twice so far because I've only been there not even a month yet. Not a month. Okay. Yet. But yeah, he is he's enjoying it. The other day I felt like I was gonna die. But at the end of it, I felt really proud of myself. Exactly. Like, the thing too. Like when I do what I well, two parts. One, because I want to get healthier, you know, I yeah. want to be healthier and stronger and all these things. Um, I'm like. I'm proud of myself for for actually doing that thing but mm -hmm. then i'm also proud of myself for just doing what i said i was going to do which was show up that day right yeah. so it's like one thing to be like okay i want to lose weight and i'm trying to you know eat healthy for like one meal I and that's another thing because <laughs> sometimes that's all it is and then the next exactly. day, you're like, but at know. least you did it look at least you did that one meal right <laughs> you did that one meal. and then you didn't do that all day all day. And every day is a new day, right? Yes. Every, every day, day is a new day. Is a, well, I talked to the other, my other Lisa, did you know, you know, other Lisa, and she said, every moment is a new moment. That was her, like, quote of the day. When I All right, other Lisa. Now, look, I hadn't even thought about that one, but I guess she's right. Yes, That's she is she said, right. Every moment is a new moment to, like, start over, right? Yep. So, yeah, so joining the gym was a great thing. Going to the gym was a great thing actually participated in the classes and like keeping it up and i also need a person to encourage me like i'm not yeah. i'm not that person that's just gonna go to a random gym and pick up a weight or something no, mm -mm. no and, and what we did and what we we like i think i like the fact and i like the fact that you and arthur are going together i like the fact that cliff and i can get up and go together because we kind of push each other because when one person is kind of like like, mm -hmm. like hugging a pillow and not, and not pushing, you know, not turning the alarm or whatever. The other one could be like, come on, we got to go. Right. Exactly. And then, and then you go. But the thing is like, there's not, nothing beats that feeling when you're done that mm -hmm. you've accomplished this. Like I yes. actually, I did it and it feels good. And I think it's good to be able to, you know, to like do it together. Um, mm -hmm. And you well, accomplishment like, is also one of the, one of the things that leads to happiness. I know yeah. we don't like to think of happiness as a destination, kind of like I'm happy when, but mm -hmm. you are happy on the journey to doing something, right? When you actually yeah. have something that you're working towards, mm -hmm. you're happy. Yeah. You're, and then also when you accomplish it, right? Like we all need goals, it seems. Like yes. we have to have something we're striving for. 
that yeah. leads us to a happier place for sure. And that is a good point. Like, so is happiness a des a destination? And I guess it's like making those incremental steps to be to where you are really supposed to be, mm. right? Like, so in a way, I you set little goals for yourself. So if I set the goal, like we try to go three days a week and I'm like, okay, next week, if I at least get there one, mm -hmm. I'm going to mm -hmm. be happy with myself because it's more than I've gone the last like six weeks. So exactly. I'll, <laughs> I'll be very happy that I did that. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not okay. a final destination, right? Mm -hmm. It's almost like you said, like, small kind of incremental destination yep. right you're getting to just like every day if i do what i say i'm gonna do i'm proud of myself for doing it like that makes me happy that makes me feel good and then one day you'll turn around and you've accomplished some bigger goal maybe you had a weight loss goal or maybe you need to lower your cholesterol whatever exactly. it is and exactly. then you've gotten that but just being on that journey to the accomplishment also makes you happier and I think also another thing is like bringing other people on, right? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. somehow like you're sharing that about Orange Theory, other people are hearing it. Maybe they'll try it. Maybe they wanted to try it. Maybe you're encouraging them. Like mm -hmm. if something feeds into your spirit, I think when you know that you can like encourage or like help other people. Too. Well, I was listening to a podcast because now I'm trying to pay more attention to happiness right. stuff since I have been having this show. So I was listening to this podcast and, oh no, no, it was a TED talk. It was a TED mm -hmm. talk. It was mm -hmm. a Harvard professor who had done this study on happiness and what makes people happy kind of long-term. Mm -hmm. It was like over 30 years or 20 years or 20 or 30 years. It was a long time. Yes. And he said that people who have warm connections Mm -hmm. other people yep. are happier and healthier yeah so yep. just like you're saying like a lot of it is connection like it's other people whether it's because i guess you know they're encouraging you whether they're your partner whether mm -hmm. they're friends whether they're family they can even be strangers there was also another study he he cited about having like this group who was commuting and had like one group talk to strangers on their commute and have another group just kind of like, you know, listen on their phone or read or whatever. And right. that the people who actually talk to strangers were happier once they Which, reached their You community. never know though how like just some kind gesture will like really touch somebody, right? And so uh -huh. even there was this, I went to lunch with some coworkers today and there was this um, older lady, she had a cane mm. and she was like trying to, I, she, I just, I just held a door for her. Like she was just going, and she, you would have thought that I gave her like a million dollars. She was like, oh, thank you so much. And I mean, just that one little thing, it made me happy, right? Cause I was right. like, oh, I really, you know, I was able to help some. And it was so, it was so easy for me. I'm just, oh, just hold the door. But right. I mean, just to think about that, I'll never see her again, probably. She don't know my name. I don't know her name, but mm -hmm. it's something about being able to like meet another person's needs. And yeah. Um, to be able to kind of like connect with them, I think mm -hmm. that that definitely fills a person's cup. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that for sure because you don't know, like you said, how like a small interaction can for you can have like a huge impact on someone else because maybe you know she might live alone, maybe no one's spoken to her all day, no one's holding any doors for her, and she might have to you know push them over yeah. herself, and it, maybe her arm is broke or tight or right. whatever. Right? Who yeah. knows? But for you, you're kind of like, I'm the door all the time, you know, people, but for her, she's like, oh my gosh, yeah, it's just my day. Exactly, exactly. Um, and you know, like little things, it was so funny. I was out to lunch with my coworkers, like we all probably around the same age. Like I would say probably between like 40 and like say 50, right? Mm -hmm. 35 and 50. And we we got some some beverages in um for lunch that will re might require an ID in some places. <laughs> and so when the waiter was like, "Can we see your <laughs> can we see your ID?" We all were like, "Thank you!" Like that made us a little happy. <laughs> <laughs> Right, you're like nobody asked us. Nobody has asked for that in so many years. But anyway, it was just so funny because all of us were like, "Well, thank you." And yes, so we get that the, waiter. <laughs> the waiter was like, "Oh, I'm sorry. You know, like I didn't. I wasn't trying to insult." And we were like, "No, no, no. Thanks." So I said, "You're working on getting your tip. You're working on getting a good tip." <laughs> <laughs> but um, but I guess it was just their policy, and it was just it was just hilarious because I was like, clearly we are over twenty one. Clearly, oh. now we might not know how much over, but we over twenty one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was a place with my sons, and they didn't even ask them for their ID. Now they're twenty one, 
and 23, but still, they too young to not ask them. I can I see if as me. Right. <laughs> but, That's it. But they should, maybe, I don't know. Because they if, even if they're with you, they should be asking, right? So That's what I said. That's what I said. And Jay's like, oh, it's because you're here. I said, what's that got to do anything? Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I don't know who I am. That mm -hmm. has nothing to do with anything. Exactly. That's exactly. you. Yeah. And so, but yeah, I was, you know, just, and so today, I think, because I knew I was going to be speaking with you this evening, like, I just, like, just started to notice more. Mm. about how I feel in certain situations. Like I just started to be a little bit more, I guess, present. Mm. And I think that might bring some level of happiness too, because you're, like you said, you're intentionally- oh, being present, yes, in the thinking present. about the things that you're grateful for or the things that you are, um, that you're experiencing in a day. Mm -hmm. um, and I think some things could be, um, you know, could be draining or it could- could could uh, maybe bring you some sadness, but I think that that like the things that bring you joy and happiness outweigh all of them. Yeah, well, um, I like what you said about being a uh, present, right? Presence and actually paying attention mm -hmm. because that's when you do notice those little things, right? Yeah. When you when you are actually present in the moment, and that also can help you not be so worried, right? Because if you're in the moment, because all worry is is like foreshadowing a future that you really can't predict right exactly but it's upsetting you it's frustrating you it's stressing you out it's making you upset or whatever had you just stayed in the moment right had yep. you just stayed where you were then you wouldn't have that worry of the past of the future or thinking about something that upsets you in the past you can't change anyway exactly where why are we there i had this discussion actually with my mom earlier today because i told you we've been having this challenge with the phone and then we had to call some place, someone else, like for some other situation for my aunt. And she's mm -hmm. like, oh my God, what if they do the same thing to T-Mobile? I was like, can we just call them first? We might right. not have that issue. Right, exactly. right. You know what I mean? Like something even that simple. I was like, we might not have the same. Oh, I don't know. I said, you're worrying about it. We haven't even called the people. We called the people. We did not have the issue. It was fine. Fine. Right. It was fine. Yeah. But now she was like getting all stressed out. She was getting all anxious and, you know, about it. I'm like, just just be here let's just Chill. focus on what we want now and then move on to the next thing and then we'll you know figure it out once we get there did it change her mindset like around the things that she would be concerned about so the third person you called did she think that they were going to be like the second or like the first you know? you know it's interesting i would say she was visibly calmer like physically um i would say she was visibly like physically more relaxed yeah. And, and, and also I notice, you know, as, as I get older, I'm starting to appreciate myself and mm -hmm. like who I am and, and what I bring to people. And I do bring yeah. kind of a calm, I think, because yeah. I'm not always like, ah. I'm always like, let's, let's, just you know, level. Mm -hmm. Let's calm down. Yeah. Let's, 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 calm down. All right. let's just chill out for a second, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and see what happens. Because at first, yeah, she was like, she was upset. The first issue and the second issue, she was still like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. But by the time, because I think I, I think I had to call like four or five people. But by the time I got to the third one, yeah, like, okay, well, you just handle it. But she wasn't all like, like wound up. Like I said, it was very visible because she was getting frustrated and she was getting upset. And she's mm -hmm. like, understand why this is so hard. Da, 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 da. And she's like, you call, you know. And then by the time we got to the third one, mm -hmm. she was more like, okay, you know, you you handle it. And that kind of thing. And I think it was, I don't know that she would say it was because she was being present, but I think it was. I think yeah. it was because I had pulled her back to the moment to be like, let's just handle these things one at a time. Like exactly. One. Yeah. And and I think also it's probably good when we see people like going down that road, or even if we can catch ourselves to kind of catch them so that they're aware, right? Like uh -huh. so they're aware of it. Because I think that. Like I said, knowing that I was going to have this conversation with you today just made me more mindful of just like interactions and people and just their presence. Right? Mm. And so I think that that is very, um, yeah, I think it's important, like how we operate in the world and how we, you know, interact with people. Well, that and, brings me then to my next question. So when you find that you are not in your joyous place or your contented place, like how do you get back to it is it awareness is it just 
saying to yourself something's off here i'm not feeling right like i'm really upset about something small like really knowing and recognizing it or is mm -hmm. it something else that you do i call it out like usually is something you know it's something very tangible like i know exactly what it is that really you know that really upset me and I will call it out. And if it's a person, like if it's an interaction, I don't like wait and dilly dally and like let stuff fester in me. If somebody really bothered me, I'm going to tell them. I'm mm. going to tell them in the mo in a loving way. Right. Um, after I've calmed down, right? After I've calmed down, um, I don't know. Look, I don't know who's listening. They might be like, no, you're not. But after <laughs> I calm down, I will try to, you know, address it in a loving way. Um, but I find that like not holding on to, to things is helpful. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So letting go. Right? Yeah, letting go. I really and I and I believe I really do believe in like true forgiveness. Like I don't use I'm not going to forget. Like mm -hmm. if I feel like you wronged me, I'm going to remember that. Mm -hmm. But I am going to forgive you and try to move on, you know, because what, what good is it to hold? What good is it to hold on to mm -hmm. something that is going to hold you back from from um, your happiness and it's going to hold them back from their happiness. So what, what steps do you take to get to true forgiveness? Cause true forgiveness is not an easy thing to do, but I can see for sure if you're holding onto something and you're, you know, for a long time, that is definitely going to lead to stress. It's going to lead to poor health, you know, all of these things, but how do you get to true forgiveness? I feel like I have to tell a person exactly how I feel and like mm -hmm. really let them know like how you've offended me, what, what happened. And then once I do that, I'm going to sit back and see how you operate. Mm -hmm. Like, are you going to say, I'm sorry, but still do it again? Are you going to, um, you know, I don't necessarily expect a person to like kiss my butt or something, but are you going to like try to make up for it? Like, mm -hmm. are you going to be genuinely, uh remorseful um yeah. and then if i feel like you are then it like helps me to let my guard down a little bit more with you but of course when somebody has done something that's offended me my guard is going to be uh i'm going to be um probably a little less open with that person mm -hmm. and then as time goes by and i see that they are really not going to do it again because the best apology is change behavior mm -hmm. and so i need to see I need to see the change behavior. Um, I'm writing that down. I like that. And, and, and apology is change behavior. <laughs> and then I think also is your is your mindset and your thoughts about it because you're not. What mm -hmm. good is it going to do me to be angry or unforgiving of you? And you're running around living your life, mm -hmm. and I'm sitting here being mad. That's true. Like mm -hmm. has it? Like what good is that? <laughs> it makes no sense. And so, um, and somebody said something, I've been saying it to everybody for the past couple of weeks, that things don't happen to you, they happen for you. I believe that. And I, I literally, like crazy stuff happened. Like my car totally broke down on Saturday, like in the middle of Rice's Town Road. And I kept on saying, Lord, and I know it, 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 was a, it was a whole lot of things. I know. And at the time, you can't, you're not really like, and this is happening for me. This I is like happening it. for and me. It, it was my husband's birthday. We had all these plans. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> things don't happen to us. They happen for us. And I'm going to tell you, we had, we were supposed to go out of town and we ended up having to postpone our trip. And I'm telling you, the we had the best weekend chilling. Mm. literally chilling here at home had so much fun the home like home. enjoying mm. where we live yeah. enjoying like outside um like mm. doing little things like planting flowers like just doing stuff mm -hmm. and like that like that brought so much joy even though it was outside of our plans i haven't always been like that i haven't always been okay with you would like have fallen, in the past, you would have completely fallen apart if your plans have like, Oh my apart. gosh, this is great, you know. But I really, I'm like, okay, Lisa, things don't happen to you that happen for you. And then on the back end of it, I can see. I was talking talking to my best friend about it. I was like, on the back end of it, I can see where this is what we needed. We didn't need to be running around. We can run around next weekend. We didn't yeah. need to be running around last weekend. Right, right. You do a lot of running around, you know. Yes, Tamisha. Yeah, you do a lot of running around, but I mean, it's because you you 
you you both have very full lives. You have a lot of family and friends, you know, and you have all these great connections, right? So you want to make sure that you're out here keeping those connections because they bring you so right. much joy. They right. Do. But there is something about, like you said, slowing down, right? There can be joy found in just slowing down, right? And not doing all the things and just and, being present in your home and appreciating where you are, you know. And, and I think it for like we were forced to, but I feel like that's another it happened for us. Like it was very inconvenient for my car to break down on Rice's Town Road, just inconvenient. Right. Like how <laughs> what, what was that? Right. Like it probably never happened ever. Yeah. Never, ever. And triple A, it was just triple A took so long. Like it was a whole lot. But mm -hmm. um the ability to be able to like step back and because like what you just said, like because we were supposed to be out of town, we didn't have any appointments with anybody here. Right? Like we right. didn't have, so it was and nobody was, expected you to be home. Nope. And nobody <laughs> expected us to be anywhere. And it was just it was lovely. Lovely. Wow. That is really good. That's a great story. I love that. <laughs> just that's almost like full circle about what you were saying about just being present. You know? Exactly. And then exactly. also how you look at things, right? How you took that and, and looked at it differently to say, this is happening for us. This isn't to us. Like yeah. why? You know, of course, the, you know, the car breaking down that happens. Right. But that doesn't mean we can't still have a great weekend. We can't still enjoy each other. We can't mm -hmm. still have time we have yeah. this beautiful home that we haven't been in and have a <laughs> weekends right? right so like, right. how about we just stay here yeah, exactly <laughs> and, you know? and it was just it was just so good and then monday morning when i got up and like i was on my first meeting i was like yeah i feel rejuvenated and relaxed wow. and so like that was that was you know something i was grateful for really yeah, it's back to the small things. You know what yep. I mean? Like, it's back to the small things. We don't always have to be out everywhere doing all mm -hmm. the things. Sometimes nope. we can just be home with our significant other, our husband mm -hmm. or spouse or whomever, and just enjoying that person. Exactly. Exactly. And that's it. That's yeah. Oh, great. That makes yeah. me smile. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. And, it, and like you said, it just set off um, the whole week, right? Like it just set off a, a good week. Oh, yeah. So that was even more than a day for you. That was just like, it just set the tone for your whole week. Yo. It did. It did. Filling that cup. Yeah. I know. I think it's Ayanla who said that, right? Ayanla Van Zandt about you can't pour from an empty cup. You exactly. Have to pour. Oh, no, well, actually, well, no. she said you can't even pour from a full cup. You have to get from your from overflow. The overflow. You have to pour from the oh, overflow. Yes. And we recently had a speaker come in and um, talk to our leaders about that. Like she mm -hmm. had, it was, it wasn't on, cause I couldn't, I was looking for it, but it wasn't on YouTube. She sent it to me. It was on something else, but it was literally like a illustration of this person just pouring a liquid into a container and it's coming, you know, the water is coming out mm -hmm. and we have to be so full that mm -hmm. we are giving to everybody. We the, the goal is not for us to be depleted. The goal is for us to be full and then give to other people from our overflow. And like mm -hmm. that was something else that has really that has really stuck with me. I think um that person maybe came to speak to us like in October or something. And like that has just really stuck with me. Mm -hmm. um, That's a good visual too. Like um, it's almost like I visualize it as like a happy cup. Right? Like, exactly. Yes. Yes. <laughs> like, is my happy cup overflowing? Is it just almost full? Is it only halfway there? Right? Is it yep. not even? Because, like you said, we're, if you're not aware, you're not even paying attention, people mm -hmm. will pull from you, you know, do this, help me with this, you know, and or even just a conversation, depending on what it is, can pull a lot of your energy, right? Yeah. Take a lot out of you. But you have to then be aware for yourself to be like, oh, I don't know if I can deal with this person now. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if I can have this conversation now. Yeah. I don't know because I'm not in a place where I'm overflowing. You know what I mean? Correct. Correct. And there's power in the no as well, right? Like, mm -hmm. so some of that, some things that could lead to your happiness are knowing when to say no. And we don't um, know when to do that. We don't know when to do that. Girl, I'm so bad. <laughs> One of my good girlfriends, she. <laughs> We used to work together and she had a big poster on my door with like that stop sign and no. Uh -huh. And so she would like, every now and then she would come and she would close my door and she was like, have you been? 
<laughs> and I'm like, no. <laughs> and she's like, I can tell, I can tell. But she always, she always reminds me of um, just the power of no, mm. and how that can that can also keep that cup, make sure that cup is overflowing. Yeah, no, that's another great tip. There's definitely power. <laughs> No, because we just we sometimes are like giving too much and we don't want to disappoint people. Right. That's so we good. don't we sacrifice ourselves so we don't disappoint other people. Exactly. And what kind of equation is that? You know, that, that is not it, makes, a, it really makes no sense if you think about it. But Kamisha, I wonder if it's something like that has to come to you like later in life. Mm. You know, maybe we spent so much of our early years trying to please people and make people happy, but now we realize that you have to like really uh, not being selfish, but you have to make sure that you're that you've cared for yourself. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. And I would I would say that you are being selfish, you know, because I feel like that's part of it too, especially for women. It's oh, it's mm -hmm. women. Men don't care. They they go do what they want to do. That's they right. ain't got no problems. They just out and about enjoying themselves, and they're That's looking true. at you like what's wrong, you know. Right, but women like we're taught to be so sensitive to everyone else. We're taught mm -hmm. to be like everyone else, paying attention to everyone else. But like you said, I think as you get older, and you realize this hasn't been working for me. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. <laughs> In some way, yeah. shape. Or maybe it's, you know, your health that's not going well. You know, maybe it's your relationships that are not doing well, yeah. right? Because you're so busy, like, putting out and giving and giving and giving. And then you think, oh, but I can't be selfish and paying attention to myself because then that person or that situation is going to fall and it's going to yeah. be my fault. But mm -hmm. it's not. Nope. It's really not. And also one thing I've learned because I was really hard on myself. Well, you know, I lived in another country for two and a half years. Which I still admire so much, which I still admire that Thank you did you. That. <laughs> But even though I did it, like it, it took me a while to be okay with it, right? Like I still, I'm a mother, right? So I'm leaving, yeah. like please your children, even though they weren't like little children. children. Yeah. But what I learned was that when you are actually doing things for yourself, and other people see that, it gives them permission to do things for themselves. Exactly. Exactly. That's what it does. Like yes. in, in a good way. Like, yep. and I, I learned that from my son, my youngest son, when I was thinking, oh my God, I'm leaving my youngest son. He's the one that actually came to me and said, Oh, mom, you're so brave. Like, I want to be braver. And I was like, You think I'm brave? See? You don't think exactly. I'm brave? Yes. They benefit <laughs> from you being the whole you, from you being yeah. the whole you. Not yes. you holding it like holding back, um, uh, but but you like really being your full self. And I feel like even like since you've come back from that experience, I don't think we see each other so much. But every mm -hmm. time I've interacted with you, you 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 seem like more at peace and mm -hmm. more like centered. I was so, going that, yeah. 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 And so I think that that is, I mean, that's a gift in and of itself that you're even able to give to your family. Yeah, I do. I feel more at peace. I feel more centered. And again, that's one of the things that had me, you know, kind of continue with these discussions because I want more yeah. women to feel like that. You know, I yeah. want us all to kind of get out of this people pleasing cycle and stress cycle. Yeah. Of course, Black women, especially, are the ones with the, you know, high levels of diabetes and heart disease and, mm -hmm. you know, dying of cancers, all these things. Yeah. And a lot of it is because, like you said, we're not giving from our overflow. Mm -hmm. We are giving from what we barely have. Yeah. And then you turn around one day and now your relationships, health, all that stuff is at risk. Mm -hmm. And why? And who controls that? Only you. Exactly. Only you. exactly. Nobody else is coming to save you from that, right? You and, have and to save yourself from that. And so is it really being selfish? No. Or is it being like more mindful? Because at the end of the day, you can't do for them if you're not right. 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 And I know I, I feel mean, like I would say selfish, but in a good way. Not so like we're taught selfish is a negative thing, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's not selfish, um, like in spite of, like it's not as though you're selfish and you are just ignoring everybody else, right? right? That's yeah. one thing to be selfish and just be out, out doing your whole thing, not caring about other people. It's selfish in order so that you can support all of these people, right? Exactly. Right. Exactly. You have to be giving to yourself so that you can support all of these other people. Yep. If you're not That's giving to yourself, you can't, you can't support all these other people. That's the motive. That is true. That is yeah. very true. It's, 
it's kind of like that little that life mask analogy on the airport. You know how they say, put that face mask on yourself before you put it yes. on other people. Like that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. But we don't do that. We're like, oh my God, we gotta make sure this other person has whatever. Mm-mm. We are not, yeah, we're not putting it on other people. Yeah. But yeah, we do need to be paying more attention to ourselves, kind of like children sometimes, right? How they mm-hmm. only themselves, they only, only right. focus. Like, oh, okay. Somebody else here. <laughs> exactly right. Like literally, they don't even know. I have my one friend's son. He he don't even know. Like, he gets so lost in his own world sometimes that he doesn't <laughs> even know. And he's like, Oh, what, what's happening? What who, when did you get here? It's like, no. I've been here. <laughs> right. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, mm-hmm. so it is it's not a bad thing, right? To be mm-hmm. more oh, let's see, that's right. So self-centered. That's what she said. Yeah. Like, yes, mm-hmm. more yes, self-centered, self-focused. We Focus. have to taking time to do that. And like you said, I think when we get older is when we start to like feel the repercussions of not doing that. And yeah. that's when we shift. And we're like, okay, something needs to change here. Like we need to actually shift. And it's almost like you give yourself permission, you mm-hmm. know, like you, you kind of have to give yourself permission to do that, to be that way a little bit, to be more self-centered or self-focused in some areas. You mm-hmm. have to give yourself permission to do it. And be okay that other people are not going to always be okay with that, right? But you yeah. have to be okay with that too. Yeah. Like you have to be okay with saying, I need to take this time. Like you said, I need to just get back into me. I need to mm-hmm. take this time to like recharge rejuvenate like i need to take this time to refocus on me mm-hmm. and be okay if someone is like oh what do you mean what, what right. about me i thought we were gonna do blah blah, blah. exactly can do that once i have gotten myself back yeah. you know I, that's what, I like the balance that's exactly what it yeah. is and i feel like i'm it's always a toggle like trying to be balanced that is mm-hmm. exactly what it is is balance mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. But it's not going to always be an, an equal balance. I feel like it's just an uneven balance. You know, as a as a working mom, right, as you mm-hmm. are, lots of times you hear about this balance, like work-life balance, and people yeah. are always trying to make it equal. It's, it's not, not going to be equal. Mm-mm. It's not going to be equal. That's not the balance. The balance is some days I'm going to have to focus on my child. The balance is some days I'm going to have to focus on my work. Yep. Some hours I might have to focus on cooking. Some days I have to stay home with my husband for the whole weekend. You know what I mean? Like it's not going to be but, this like even balance constantly. And no. you feel bad about that. You can't yep. feel like, oh, I'm spending all of this time on this thing and none on this thing. And well, it's, it's not like hour by hour, like literally, like you're not going to be like, okay, right, I it's not a time balance. Work, it's right. really about like what, where the attention is needed. That makes, mm-hmm. I think that makes a person feel balanced. So mm-hmm. if I'm able to like for weeks and weeks, I'm traveling for work, but then I might be able to take some time off and spend concentrated time at home. Did I spend as long concentrated at home as I did when I was away working? No, mm-hmm. but that quality time that you're able to spend is, mm-hmm. is like, you know, kind of rebuilding that emotional, those emotional cups for like your family and the people that, um, that you might've left behind. Yeah. yeah it's, it's really yeah. tough though. I think it's one of the things, especially for like our generation, I was talking about this, my sister-in-law that we deal with as women because we didn't really, they didn't have that before. Like in the previous generation, men were the ones that were out like the high earners, they were the ones that were out with, the, you know, the big jobs, the women, mm-hmm. they may have worked a small job, you know, but they also still did all of their home duties, right? Exactly. Doing all this stuff around the house. And then you have, you know, our generation, which kind of comes in and is, is like, we want to achieve, we want to do all of those things as well yep. with the career. And we also are still responsible for the home stuff. Like, exactly. We don't have the time that our previous generation had to do that. So now we feel stressed, we feel overwhelmed, mm-hmm. we feel guilt, right? Mm-hmm. Not able to focus on those things. But then you have the generation below us that's like, listen, <laughs> I don't need a house. I know. <laughs> I'll stay with you. <laughs> exactly. And I ain't cleaning no house if I got one. You know what I mean? Like, so, so they're like yeah. total, you know, in a totally different space. And I think sometimes it's also seeing like where you are, right? Where you are in your life and what kind of things you don't have to do anymore. Because this was yeah. another conversation I had with someone who was kind of like, oh, but I should be doing these house chores and things. 
I said, why? Why? Right. You know, you where, where does that come from? You know, right. it probably comes from your parents or your mom, but you have to think your mom was in a different place. You know exactly. what I'm saying? You might exactly. be able to afford to get somebody to even come in and do some of that stuff That's for you. Right. If you couldn't, you know, so you have to actually rethink it a little bit. It's not yep. always just like these traditional roles have to continue in that way. And how do you want to spend your time? Like if it's if Saturday is your only day off, right? It's not even mm-hmm. going to church. Saturday might be your only day that you're off. Are you going to want to spend all day Saturday just? <laughs> Sorry, disregard. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to want to spend all day Saturday cleaning or would you want to just allocate, you know, maybe allocate some of that coffee money or some shoe money to have mm-hmm. somebody clean your, you know, clean your, um, help you with your house chores? Well, that's, I mean, that goes back to the basic question of what do you want? Yep. What do you even want? What do you, what yep. do you want to do with your time? How do you want to spend your time? Oh my God, I'm supposed to unplug that thing. <laughs> I didn't know it was in this room. <laughs> It's yeah, yeah, it's like go get the door. Somebody else can get the door though. I don't want to get the door. But right. anyway, but mm-hmm. it's more about it's more about like what is it that you actually want? Mm-hmm. And that's another thing I don't think people spend time asking themselves, right? right? So, like you said, you do actually have to ask yourself, how do I want to spend my time? Do I even mm-hmm. want to spend my time doing that? Or do I want to spend my time, you know, with other people mm-hmm. and you know, the activities or other things that you know bring me some kind of peace and harmony. Yeah. Or am I doing all these things because I feel obligated to do them? And that's of, yeah. Yeah. What do I want and, to do? and it definitely takes like the clarity of thought to be to really think about like what what brings you that joy? Like how are you going to live? There's some things we just got to do, right? You just you got to go to the supermarket. You got to get your groceries. You got say you want to cook or whatever. There's yeah. just some chores that might not be your favorite. You got to fold the clothes, whatever. There's things you just have to do. But at the end of the day, like, where do you want to focus your time? And right. that, that's that's how you're going to maintain that happiness. I think that's also a really good place to be. Like, if you're a person who can actually say that to yourself, mm-hmm. like, spend time thinking about what is it I want to do? Where is it I want to be? What is it I want in life? Yes. That also may be what you were saying. It's a lesson that you kind of get to as you get older. Mm-hmm. It's not something, you know, that you come to when you're younger. It's something yeah, that you're still learning all the lessons. We still learn the lessons when we old, but yeah, you know, we, we, had, also- we had a lot more life experience and we can <laughs> <laughs> but I'm also very excited about my lessons now. I used to be right. I'm like super excited about like all the lessons that I'm getting to learn and stuff. And <laughs> Is it okay? that was a person ringing a the bell. Uh-huh. They excited too. They're excited. <sighs> yeah, she's excited because she's like no one's running to get the door. But that's another thing. I'll talk yeah. to her. That. she's she's happy she's happy she's here she's happy exactly. to be here. <laughs> she's happy. I'm sure she's happy you're there too so it's all good <laughs> she, is, it's she all is she is she is she is she is okay so as we wind down our happiness chat Lisa are there any any other thoughts that you have anything you want to share any anecdotes or words of more words of wisdom you've already shared so many things happen. <laughs> Things happen for you, not to you. Knowing when to say no, there is power in the no. The best apology is change behavior. Letting go and forgiveness are really big on your own kind of personal happiness. It's not mm -hmm. about the other person. It's about you. And I think give yourself time and space to like, to reflect on Mm -hmm. those things that really bring you joy and make your heart happy. Mm-hmm. And just do them. Give me some time to reflect on it. Make a plan and do them. Yes. Oh man, you know that is that was so small but very powerful <laughs> because it, it really was because it's one thing to just be aware and like oh I like these things and it's mm-hmm. another thing to actually take the action. Yep, right, like you exactly. have to take the action. You yep. actually have to take the action to do the stuff. That brings you to happiness. It's not enough to know and be like, oh, I wish I could go travel Mm-mm. here. You got to put your feet on those trails. Oh, right. Oh, mm-hmm. it's so nice if I could, blah, blah, blah. No, make it happen. Like, exactly. think about it, 
and then make a plan and take some action. And it could be, you know, a small step or a small action, but at least again, you're on the way to that accomplishment, you know, moving in the direction of what it is you want when you figure mm-hmm. out what that is, right? And take that yeah. action, like go in that direction. Exactly. Absolutely. Ah. Oh, so crazy. Yes. It's been lovely. I feel yes. I feel so privileged that you um invited me to come to the chat today. Oh well, I'm really just so glad that you were able to do it. I'm just I know as we said, you your your life is so full, you know. So I'm just so glad that you were yeah. able to do it. Oh, I have one last question. Yes. What would you say was your last happy moment? Well, I just I mean. <laughs> I feel pretty happy right now, <laughs> but I guess, I mean, if you want to pinpoint it, I think I talked about how um, I went out to lunch with my coworkers today and we were just like celebrating the the school year and like all the things that, you know, happened. Um, we're, we're working on this project that we created and it's just been a joy to be able to like mm-hmm. see it come to fruition. And mm-hmm. so we, at the end, it was three of us. We had like a little group hug <laughs> and it like made me so happy. Like these three grown women, like <laughs> at the restaurant, like having a group hug. But it was just that we just felt, you know, we felt joyful that the year was over and that it had been, you know, it had been a success and like our hard work paid off. And so- that, that brings my heart much happiness to to even just just be in an environment with you know just like minded individuals that we can just make each other better. Mm, yes, that is amazing. Congratulations Thank on your you. That does that does help too. When you're actually around people who are you know doing things that bring them joy, and they're happy people, and then you also yes. have things in common, right? That you all also kind of feel good about together mm-hmm. That's, mm-hmm. that's the great thing awesome. and it's the goals it's like we set goals and we you know we reach them and i think that's yeah, that's part right. of it the goals mm-hmm. the connections the mm-hmm. people you know all wow. those things that you said make for a happy life how about that <laughs> how about that yeah all in one day right so, yeah yes. Definitely. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Lisa. Dr. Thank Lisa, you. congratulations again. Dr. Thank you. Thank you. That's thank amazing. You. I know you're so proud of that accomplishment. That's amazing. Yes. And I'm so glad to be done. But yeah, I'm I'm very <laughs> grateful. Very grateful. <laughs> I yes. know. It's worth it. For yeah. anybody out there that's trying, that's almost there, it's worth it. Right. Just keep going. Mm-hmm. Just keep going. You're going to get there. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Enjoy no, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, everyone, for, for joining us. We will be back again next Thursday with another lovely chat with another Yay. lovely, amazing woman. So, woo! Cool. Well, All thank right. you for bringing us in, Kamisha. So, thank you for your vision. Appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay. I'm going to end. Okay. How do I end this thing? Sorry.